I, I, I think it still needs money. It still needs, you can't rely on Reliance to do it all the time. You can't rely on the Ambani family to, to keep forking money into the league. Um, they need sponsors. They need people to um, to throw money in and, and back a team with, unfortunately, seriously, millions of dollars because they need to be able to change the infrastructure, which has got so much better with academies and uh, training for youth through the country. Um, I think every team needs a reserve team. That's I know it's something that uh, Sunil Chetri brought up a couple of weeks ago, that every team should have a reserve league because you're having players not playing games. Um, and then you ask them to come in with, they haven't played for six weeks, you ask them to come in and play and they can't play because they're not fit. Um, so I think they need to introduce that. Um, I think a youth league running at the same time as the, the ISL would be great rather than trying to run it through monsoon season. <laughs> um, there are things in the infrastructure that do need changed, but the way things have progressed since the first season is incredible. They they have had backing as far as finances go, but it still needs more. It still needs big corporate sponsors and um, like sportswear companies. I know there's Puma with Bangalore and uh, Mumbai this season, but they were with Kerala first season, second season, then disappeared. Then there's Nike India. Where's Nike India? Why aren't they investing? Why Adidas? Um, anybody? Any of these companies? Admiral we had with with Kerala one season. All these companies are disappearing, and I understand that they're they're keeping Indian companies doing the the kit sponsors, but they need a financial backing from these companies, and I know those companies can't do that. Um, so it's uh, I think the only one who's who's really stood up and and thrown a lot of stuff in is Nivea, and I think that's that's great. They need more, um, but the the league the infrastructure is great. The infrastructure is so much better than what it was, and I think it's um, it's a it's definitely progressing, but again, I hate repeating, but you, it's still a baby. When it comes to competing with other, even other Asian leagues, it's still a baby. So it's uh, it's getting there. It's going to take a lot of time, and unfortunately, you need to be patient as fans. Um, but it's going to take some time, and with the fan bases they have, Goa is a crazy, crazy football state. Kerala is a crazy football state. Calcutta, we all know. Is a is a crazy state, um, and it's great to have the two the two big teams back in the ISL. Um, I know there's a lot of trouble going on right now with ATK and Mohan Bagan with their affiliation and who's who, and it's a tough one to take. I obviously played for ATK, I never played for Mohan Bagan, so I can't uh, I can't answer either way <laughs> because I I don't want to get the criticism from Mohammed Bagan fans like I've seen over the internet over the last couple of days since the, the advert that was thrown out by the ISL. Um, but it's great to have East Bengal and Mohammed Bagan back in the league because we all know the the support they get for the for the Kolkata Derby. So um, tough for them this year. I think the timing of it is very bad with the pandemic, that everything's being run in Goa, but I think when the league starts getting back to normal and everything starts getting back to normal, I think it'll be great to have these these rivalries with your Kerala Chennai, Kerala Bangalore, Goa, um, Mumbai. I know Pune is not there, so you don't have the Maharashtra and Derby anymore, but um, I think it's great to have these derbies. And with the, adding in the Kolkata Derby, I think it's going to make the the fanfare are even a little bit bigger. The VAR Show. The one place for your weekly football update. So hello, very warm welcome to the VR show, the show which talks about all the various major football leagues in detail. Today we are going to continue with interviews and we have Mr. Ian Hume who has played for the likes of Leicester City, Preston North and Kerala Blasters, ATK among a host of other teams. So without wasting much time, I'd like to first thank Ian for coming on the show. Thank you and welcome to the show and I'd like to begin by asking you, how are you and what are you doing these days? Um, just just moved back to Canada. Um, been away, moved, moved over to the UK t- uh, 21 years ago. Um, so as my career is coming to a close, it's, uh, me and the family have moved back over to Canada. So it's, uh, 
it's something something new for all of us. Uh, just coming back and got to look what's next, and hopefully I can I can get some things going and I can get uh, my career post playing uh, going as strongly as my one playing did. For some, you like like you said, like how you moved to England earlier, maybe in your in your life earlier. And uh, there's a question which has been sent in. It was maybe down the picking order, but since you touched on that, I'll just bring it up. It is sent in by Bitu, and he has asked like you were at least in the in the internet. According to him, the st- the the data shows you were born in Scotland and you went on to play yeah. for Canada. How how and why did that happen? Um yeah, I was born in Scotland. All my family is from Scotland. Um, but we moved over to Canada when I was really young. Um, I was a year and a half old, um, and I grew up there. I, I was there until I was nearly 16. Um, so everything I knew, as far as I had a Scottish family, but everything I learned was was Canadian. So I played for Ontario, which was my province, um, since I was 12, and then I played for for Canada from 15 years old. So it was a uh, It was the only the only one that I ever really wanted to do, and of course, like you know, like uh, it's been a while. I think since since you last played, and you have a lot of leagues where probably you took part. Maybe the Premier League, which is going on, maybe the Championship, or even with the the ISL, which is going to start. Do you miss playing? One hundred percent. It's it's horrible. Um, my my career has been based around playing football for what I moved over to the UK when I was fifteen. Um, so, my my life has been based around it for the last 20 years plus. So it's uh, to not be playing is tough, but unfortunately, the the way the world has gone, um, especially in football, it's it's a tough one to get into when you when you're out for a little bit. And I had a knee injury, and when I came back from that, it was uh, I was 30, 34 years old, 35 years old when I did my knee. So it's uh, people always ask, will he ever be the same? And I got one chance to come back with Pune. Um, got messed around a little bit there at the start, and then I started playing, and I thought I played quite well. Um, but then after that, came back to the UK, and at 35 years old, trying to get a club in the UK is it's near impossible, which uh, which frustrated me. Um, but I guess it's a matter of that's it, just move on. Um, having played for so long. Still trying to get my head around not playing, but I'll I'll continue to play. Okay, not professionally, but I'll continue to play as long as my legs will let me. So, um, yeah, it's just a I'm moving on to the coaching side of things now, and I'm trying to trying to build a name for myself doing that. Of course, you you said like you went to Pune, and when you came when you came back to the UK, and uh, you're looking for clubs is difficult. Do you think like? For a player who from from maybe who has played his his entire career in the European leagues, moving to the maybe the Asian counterpart, maybe to ISL or something, coming back, is it difficult for that player to maybe get reach back to the level that he left? Um, it's a strange one to answer that because I feel that okay, I played for Leicester, I played for Preston, um, and I did very well there. Um, I think I played some of my best football when I was in the ISL. I think I was. There was a lot less politics at the time when I first went out there. It was a matter of just going out. It was an adventure to start with, and that was the first season. And then I started doing really well, and I think it's some of the most enjoyable football I've played in my life. Um, and like I said, I think I. Okay, I wasn't scoring a hundred goals a season, and like <laughs> you get some of these big names who do, but um, I was I was playing well and I was enjoying it and. It was it was frustrating not to get a to get a club back in the UK, but that was unfortunately how it is. And I think people do. Uh, it puts a little bit of a black mark on your on your CV when you try to go back to Europe after after playing in in Asia, because um, it happened the same thing. Similar happened to my friend in in Malaysia. Played in Malaysia for four or five years and trying to get back into even the MLS and in North America. And people are like, well, you've not really done anything for the last couple of years. But he scored like 15, 20 goals for for five years in Malaysia. So it was, uh, it does put a bit of a black mark on your your CV. But I think that's uh, people being fickle. They'd rather bring in somebody from a Premier League academy who's not played any professional games and scored two or three goals, but because he played for Liverpool, Arsenal, Man United um, academies that 
they have a better career than players who've played 500 plus games. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's frustrating, but it is what it is. You, you, you can't sit there and complain about it too much. You just have to move on. And I guess that's the, the situation I'm in right now. Of course, and you're like, you mentioned like maybe it's difficult and you know, like I can say that ISL is still a relatively young project compared to maybe what you have in European leagues, maybe in England. So if you had to like, it might be difficult, but if you had to compare like ISL with in the current scenario with some tire of the English football, which would that be? It's hard to compare. Um, like you just said, uh, the ISL is a baby in, can, in terms of football. The ISL is a baby. It's it's been going six years. It's it's crazy to try and even compare it to any level. I think with how some of the teams have played over the last couple of years, with your Goas and uh, Bangalore and uh, with ATK over the last 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 six years, I think the way they they they've played, I think they could compete with maybe National League, which is the, the fifth tier of English football. I think they'd compete. Um, it's the physical aspect and the, the ta tactical aspect that I think they'd struggle with. Because even these non-league teams have been, they've been established for 50, 60 years. So it's like uh, trying to compete with that is tough, but it's hard, like I said, and like you said, it's hard to compare because they are different styles of play, different um, infrastructures, how they train, how they play, how they, they go about life. Um, the ISL is definitely getting better and better, and it is a very good league. I think compared, if you compare it now to what it was in ISL one, it's a it's a completely different league. Um, it's moving in a great direction. I think the way the national team's playing. I know it's took a little bit of a back step with uh, the new coach, but they're trying to get used to his uh, philosophies and that. But I think on the whole, any fan who's watched ISL. Will tell you that the the league has got better and better every year, and um, I know it's been tough for everyone this year with the pandemic. But I think uh, I think this year will be will be an interesting one to watch, and a lot of changes. And I think the standard is a lot higher than a lot of people give it credit for. Of course, and you know, like you have been involved with the ISL, I think from the first season itself, and you have played a lot in the ISL. And in your opinion, how has it grown? Like you mentioned, like it has grown a lot since it first began, but in terms of maybe tactics or even even something like sponsorship, which was maybe difficult to find in the first season, how much has it grown in your opinion, even in the fanfare among the teams? I I, I think it still needs money. It still needs. You can't rely on reliance to do it all the time. You can't rely on the Ambani family to to keep forking money into the league. Um, they need sponsors. They need people to um, to throw money in and and back a team with, unfortunately seriously millions of dollars because they need to be able to change the infrastructure which has got so much better with academies and uh, training for youth through the country um, I think every team needs a reserve team That's I know it's something that uh, Sunil Chetri brought up a couple of weeks ago that every team should have a reserve league because you're having players not playing games um, and then you ask them to come in if they haven't played for six weeks you ask them to come in and play and they can't play because they're not fit um, so I think they need to introduce that. Um, I think a youth league running at the same time as the, the ISL would be great rather than trying to run it through monsoon season. <laughs> um, there are things in the infrastructure that do need changed, but the way things have progressed since the first season is incredible. They've, they have had backing as far as finances go, but it still needs more. It still needs big corporate sponsors and um, like sportswear companies. I know there's Puma with Bangalore and uh, Mumbai this season, but they were with Kerala first season, second season, then disappeared. Then there's Nike India. Where's Nike India? Why aren't they investing? Why Adidas? Um, anybody? Any of these companies? Admiral we had with with Kerala one season. All these companies are disappearing, and I understand that they're they're keeping Indian companies doing the the kit sponsors, but. They need a financial backing from these companies, and I know those companies can't do that. Um, so it's, uh, I think, the only one who's who's really stood up and, and thrown a lot of stuff in is Nivea, and I think that's that's great. They need more, um, but the the league, the infrastructure is great. The infrastructure is so much better than what it was, and I think it's um, it's a uh, it's definitely progressing. But again, I hate repeating, but you, it's still a baby when it comes to competing with. Other even other Asian leagues, 
it's still a baby. So it's uh, it's getting there. It's going to take a lot of time, and unfortunately, you need to be patient as fans. Um, but it's going to say, take some time, and with the fan bases they have, Goa is a crazy, crazy football state. Kerala is a crazy football state. Calcutta, we all know, is a is a crazy state. Um, and it's great to have the two the two big teams back in the ISL. Um, I know there's a lot of trouble going on right now with ATK and Mohan Bagan with their affiliation and who's who, and it's a tough one to take. I obviously played for ATK. I never played for Mohan Bagan, so. I can't. Uh, I can't answer either way because I I don't want to get the criticism from Mohammed Gam fans like I've seen over the internet over the last couple of days since the the advert that was thrown out by the ISL. Um, but it's great to have East Bengal and Mohammed Gam back in the league because we all know the the support they get for the for the Kolkata Derby. So. Um, Tough for them this year. I think the timing of it is very bad with the pandemic, that everything's being run in Goa. But I think when the league starts getting back to normal and everything starts getting back to normal, I think it'll be great to have these these rivalries with your Kerala Chennai, Kerala Bangalore, Goa, um, Mumbai. I know Pune is not there, so you don't have the Maharashtra and Derby anymore. But um, I think it's great to have these derbies. And with the, adding in the Kolkata Derby, I think it's going to make the the fanfare even a little bit bigger. Of course, and you're like, uh, you're, you're, you're quite, quite versed with the uh, derbies and, and Indian football in general. But before you went there, I don't think you had any connection with India. Why did you come to India? I mean, like in the first place, it, it, it would have been a very big adventure for you because it was the first season of ISL and probably you did not know what to expect. Why did you come to India? Um, It was just a... It was a bit of a fluke thing. Um, it was the first time in my career I'd been out of contract. I'd always had two, three, four-year contracts. And it's the first time coming up to 30 years old that I'd, I'd not had a year contract left. So um, I actually did an interview with a friend of mine for uh, when Leicester City got promoted to the, the Premier League. And he, he doing his production stuff, he'd been asked to go out and work for the ISL. And he'd already, he had a contract uh, already signed with, I think, BT Sport, which is a big one in the UK. And he just said, oh, have you, have you heard about this league? And I said, no, I hadn't heard a thing. He goes, okay, well, speak to your family and call this guy and see what he says. So I spoke to the family, spoke to my wife, and um, then I emailed this guy just to see what the, the story was around it. And he's like, oh, thanks for getting in touch. He goes, we'd love to have you on board if you if you want to come out. And it wasn't for finances. The finances weren't great, the first season especially. Um, it was just a, an opportunity and to get a contract and just to continue playing rather than searching for a club for a couple months. Um, so it was, it was one of those and I knew I'd be back by Christmas at that time. So it was, uh, it was literally pre-season and everything and I was back home go out in September or end of August, start of September. And I was back home by the uh, second week of December, third week of December. So um, it was interesting. It was great. The The first season was good. It was, like I said, it was an adventure, but I had no idea about Indian football. Um, I hadn't heard of the, the rivalry in Calcutta. I hadn't heard of the Kerala Sevens and I hadn't heard of anything like that. And uh, once I got drafted to to Kerala Blasters, I, I started doing a little bit of searching and a little bit of uh, research on Google, <laughs> and I found out quite a lot about the game, and it was uh, it was interesting. And then, obviously, like you said, I, having been out there for the time I was, I obviously learned a lot more about the league and a lot more about the I League, and um, just to see it growing over the last five years, six years has been has been great, and it has changed an awful lot, and I hope it continues that way. Of course, and uh, the next question is sent in by Syed Ayn Ali, and it, it goes, I think, earlier to your career, and you know, it's about when during your time at Barnsley, and uh, you had a very devastating injury during your first season, the head injury that you had. In your opinion, how much did that injury at Barnsley affect your career from there on? Did you always have a fear regarding that injury, like throughout your career or something? Never. Um, not once did I did I have a fear coming back. That was that was the one thing that. A lot of people were probably surprised by was I was probably the least worried about it. I think my physios, my family, my wife, 
they were always worried about me going back to training, going back into games and going to challenges. And it was something that never really bothered me. Um, do I think it affected my career? I think so. Um, but that might just be me thinking that. Um, because at, even to now, everyone asks, how's your head? And it's it's been uh, in what in eight days, it's going to be what? How many years is it now? It's going to be... I don't know. I don't even know. That's I, the problem. Like, I don't even know if, how long ago it was. I think it's uh, 12 if, years. Yeah. 12 years and in eight days, it's going to be 12 years since it happened. So, um, but people still ask me, which is frustrating because I'm still here. I've since then I've played probably 300 games. Um, so it's not like I, it stopped me being fit, stopped me playing games. It's, it is what it is. It's like, people breaking their leg, touch wood. I know it's not a nice thing, but it's like people breaking their leg, doing their cruciates in their knees. And it's a, just a long-term injury. And I was just very unfortunate that that's what happened. But unfortunately it was, it's been not held against me, but always question, a uh, bit of a question mark over my name. Of course, and you're like, uh, the most f other po famous person that I personally know who has had an in injury was Peter Cech. You know, like he had these two other uh, productive gear. Did you ever consider wearing that while playing? No, um, I've been asked and I've been advised by the specialist that probably wearing a, a helmet would have been better for me to protect it, but I didn't feel comfortable doing anything like that. If I had to change who I was to come back and play, then there was no point in my head. Um, so it, it was one of those things. It was a decision I made. Um, I know my wife wasn't overly happy when I, when I said I didn't want to do that, um, but that's how it how it is and that's the type of unfortunately the type of stubborn person i am um when it's uh when it comes down to to playing football i, I want to do it the way i always do it and it's 100 miles an hour and it's uh aggressive and it's just throw myself into tackles and headers and challenges that possibly i shouldn't do but that's who i am and it's the name i've made for myself and the way i've played and um i didn't want to change it for anybody of course, and you're like uh, staying with similar thing and this might be a little bit difficult in the sense that you have played against a lot of high quality players and if you had to choose one op opponent that you found the most difficult to play against, who would that be? I've played against, like, see, going out to the ISL, I played against guys who I dreamed about playing against. Roberto Carlos, Nesta, Matarazzi, Sylvester, uh, John Arisa. Uh, even Zakora was hard to play against. But for me, oh, sorry, I don't want to miss Bernard Mendy. Make sure you mention him because last time I did a conversation, I forgot him and he, he wasn't happy with me. Um, but honestly, the hardest player I played against, and it was when he was at Northeast and Kerala, was Cedric Honfbar. I played with him at Kerala and very, very good friend of mine. And he's so hard to play against. And I'm not sorry, I don't want to forget Aaron Hughes as well because I'm a good I'm a friend of his as well, so I don't want to forget about him. But uh, now, Cedric Honsbart was the the hardest guy to play against in the ISL when I was out there. And he's one of the toughest I've played against in my career. And, uh, he's just so smart. Like, he, he's not slow. He looks, because he was a bit older, people thought he was slow. He's not as slow as people think. But he reads the game so much faster than everybody that I played against out there. Um, also, Sandesh Jingen, sorry, I want to say that because my button... Paggio, Paggio will kick me next time he sees me if I don't mention him. Um, but no, Cedric Hosbart was such a good guy, but he was so horrible. Like he was always there and he'd kick you and push you and pull you. And he was just tough to play against. And I think he was, for me, he's one of the hardest I've come against in my career. And especially in India, I think he was the hardest. And, and in terms of uh, England, uh, which, which uh, player was the most difficult you played against? Um... I don't know. Um, like I played when I was at Pune, I played with Matt Mills. He was very tough to play against, especially when he was younger. Um, but I don't, there's not, there's not a lot that I, I can think about that I, like I played against Harry Maguire when he was young and he obviously gone on to an incredible career, but he wasn't amazing when he was a kid. It was one of those, I think he was 18, 19 when I played against him and he wasn't amazing. He wasn't, he wasn't half the player he was now, um, but I couldn't. I couldn't really label one from from the UK that I that I worried about. 
when I played against them. Um, there's a lot of guys who are tough, but nobody that I actually looked at and thought, oh, I'm, crap, I'm playing against this guy again. Um, if I had to pick one, I'd say probably Julian Lescott. Uh, when he was young, when he was at Wolves before he moved to Everton, he was he was incredible. But again, I only played against him a couple of times, so it's not somebody that I go, well, I'm worried about playing him. Of course, and we'll move back to India. And you know, like Kerala Blasters and ATK, now ATK Monbagan are the biggest names in the ISL, and you have played for both. Which team is better equipped management wise, and whose like fans are the better, in your opinion? <laughs> better equipped management wise, it's it's a tough one because Kerala have changed management, they've changed their backroom staff. The only one who's still there that's is uh the the owner still there, Mr. Prasad still there, um, and Ishvak Ahmed. That's the only ones who are still there from when I was at the club. Um if you look at ATK, they've been the same management from day one. Um, they've not changed much and I think they had a couple tough seasons when they brought in Sheringham and Westwood and then Coppel trying to change it back from after they the other two had come in. Um, so it was a tough one for them for those two seasons. But as soon as they brought uh, Antonio Habas back, you see that the club is, they win the trophy again. They, so three times in six years is an incredible feat. And um, they've still got the same owner. Mr. Goenka's there. Um, obviously, they've joined with Mohamed Gam this season, so there's only going to be more power as far as the fan base goes. Um, for me, it's hard to compare um, because I had half one season in Salt Lake with the full stadium, then second season we played in the, a different stadium because they were running the Under-17 World Cup. So we played in the smaller stadium, so the fan base was a lot less. But whenever I played in Kerala, the fans were incredible. We had 40, 50,000 every game. Um, and they're just crazy. <laughs> I think that's the safest way. They're just football mad. And I think for me, and this isn't any knock against ATK, because I know ATK and Kalkana have massive fan base. I think the most passionate for me is the Kerala fans. Of course, and uh, but you won the league with ATK. And was it, was it, how was it been like playing against Kerala? After having played for them in the first season, where you performed extremely well, and then going to ATK, how was it playing against Kerala? Um, it's football. Unfortunately, they they brought in a win player this season in Kerala. Um, we lose in the finals to ATK, which was a tough one to take. But then management changed the coach; they changed everything, and the new coach Peter Taylor came in and decided I wasn't needed, which it ticked me off. So. Unfortunately, going to uh, ATK was uh, was an issue that didn't really bother me at the time because Kerala told me that they, they didn't need me after winning player of the year, which is a f strange one. Um, so ATK came in and they, they were co-owned or they were in a partnership with Atletico Madrid, which for me was an incredible opportunity. Um, it helped me get two seasons in, in Spain after playing for Calcutta. Um, so it was, uh, I think it was the, just the way they, they went about things and playing against Kerala was tough, obviously playing in Kerala for the final. Um, but it was what it was. It's, uh, it's another game of football, a chance to win, win a trophy and okay. I, I have, I've never scored against Kerala, which they, the fans and the, everybody continually tell me I never scored against Kerala with, with Pune or with ATK. But I went home with the trophy, which was amazing. Um, we won the we won the league. It was tough doing it in Kerala, but we we had to do something. We had to win the the game, and I think uh, football is exactly that. 90, 90 minutes. You don't doesn't matter who you're playing against. It's as soon as you cross the white line, it's a battle, and I think that's what, exactly what it was. Of course, and you're like uh, you have been one of the most influential, you know, like imports in ISL, considering all the foreign players from the first season. But apart from yourself, if you had to choose one other foreigner who has the most impact in the league as a whole, who would that be? Whoa. Um, it's a tough one because you have, it depends on if you're looking over the course of it all. It's a hard one to, to narrow down because you have Corminas came over and he was incredible. Like 
the guy just scores goals, even if people watching and think, oh, he's not doing much in the game, and then he scores two goals. Like <laughs> Mendoza came over for a season and a half. He was incredible. Um, Elano for the first two seasons was incredible. Mendy for the first two seasons was incredible. Um, Cedric Hansbart was the same. Thierry, for me, Thierry has been huge. Bora, Borja, when he was at ATK for those three seasons, was incredible. Like for me, he's the best midfielder the league has had. I think he's he was just a, a perfect player, perfect pro, and just a great person. Um, but then you have Marcelinho, who played for Delhi, played for Pune, played for Hyderabad. And now he's gone to Odisha. He's he's a great player as well. So it, I can't narrow it down to one. Um, I think there's after the the marquee players stopped coming, as far as your big name, big money signings, I think once they stopped coming, I think there was more of a an affiliation with the fans and the players. Because at the time it was all this massive names and hey, don't get me wrong, they they brought a lot of eyes to watch ISL from around the world because of who the players were. But I there wasn't a massive benefit for me on field from from many of those players. Um I think apart from Elano, um John Arnarisa came out and did very well. Um apart from that, I can't really think of many players who came out and stood out and like I'm not sure I understand. I think there's not many players. Yeah, sorry, series. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't think there's that many players who came out, big, big name players who came out and really took it, not not took it seriously, but took it to the same level that they did when before they came out, if that makes sense. Um, I think the only the only one that I know that I was a, a part of was Postiga came out and he, he had a good go. He got injured one season, came back. Um, and Wes Brown. Wes Brown came out and the guy's just a... We were in a struggling team with Kerla, um, but he came out and he treated it every day the same. He came out and he worked hard and he trained hard and he played hard. Um, but other than that, I don't think there's... Apart from the names I mentioned before, I, I think it's it's tough to narrow down, but I think once the big marquee names stopped coming, I think the, the league took more of a shape and more of a an identity without being a a showcase tournament, which is what it kind of was to to drag these players in. Um, so I think it's uh, I think it's kind of for the better that they've they've changed the way they they're bringing players in. They're bringing in younger players and less marquee and more um, for better choice of words or lesser choice of words. More what's the, committed. I think if, you've got players who are more committed to playing football rather than getting the money. Of course, Daniel, like I missed one question in the, one of the previous ones where you mentioned like how playing for ATK against Kerala didn't matter once you crossed the line. I wanted to ask you, like, you have all these derbies in India, but do you think like, at least in the ISL, do you think the league and the fans are still so underdeveloped that the derbies aren't really a derby? It's hard because it's such a big country. <laughs> like... Like you've got even you've got Bangalore Kerala. We played in Bangalore. And we had nine thousand Kerala fans, and that's a six and a half seven hour drive. So it's it's hard, and it, I think because of finances, you can't expect like because the teams are so far apart. Like the closest ones for Kerala are you on Goa, you on Bangalore, you on Chennai. There's still 10, 10, 12 hour drives. So it's not like you can, as big a derby as it is, but the derbies like in Calcutta, I think that's that's going to be incredible because they'll have 80, 90,000 there in Salt Lake Stadium. They'll have that filled. As far as making other derbies, it's really hard. You had the Maharashtra derby when Pune were in the league, but now even it's Mumbai to Goa. Like that's the... That's the next closest one for them. So it's it's hard to create these derbies unless the fans do, which is what's happened with Bangalore, with the was it the West Block Blues or yeah, yeah sorry West if Block. I got it if no, okay I didn't yeah. want to get that wrong. It's not through 
disrespect, but that's what it is with them and Manjapada. They they don't like each other, which I think things need to be ironed out with that because you can't make these things personal and and very horrible. I've seen videos of it. Same with Chennai. You have the the what is it? The Matchins. The yeah. I don't know what they're they're. I don't want to misname their their supporters club, but it's uh, you see some bad videos and people getting abused and physically abused, um, which I think is wrong. Football is a sport that's supposed to be loved, and it is. That's why they call it the beautiful game. And you get these fans taking it a little bit too far. Um, I understand the passion, but there should never at any point be anyone's health and and well being compromised. And I think that's a uh, Again, that comes with being very young. <laughs> as far as a lot of the, the people you see in the videos, they're very young and they're very, not ignorant, but naive. I think they think that it's right because social media is what it is. You're allowed to do whatever you want on social media and you can hide behind your keyboard. Um, but when you do it in person, it's 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 a lot worse. And I think it's uh, something that needs to change. Um, but again, going back, I think that the derbies are a great thing. They need to be highlighted. But I think the adding in the Kolkata Derby, I think that's going to open people's eyes to how it should be run. Definitely, I hope so. And I hope it's one of the most anticipated things. And you like you said, like you are getting into coaching. Was it something that you always planned to do during your playing career or after your playing career? Um, I think just staying in the game um, in any capacity. Um, I did two levels of my coaching before I went to India. Um, I did my third level when I came back from Pune. Um, so I'm just trying to get a bit of bit of practice. I've, I've played the game for a very long time, but I've never coached properly. So I'm getting a bit of practice in. Um, and then I'm probably going to go for my fourth, my, my A license, which is whether I can do it next summer or the summer after, I'm not sure. Um, we'll see how that goes. But I've also done TV work in India, as a lot of people will know. I, I did Star Sports for the ISL. Um, I've done a little bit over here in Canada since I came over here a couple months ago. So that's another way of staying in the game. I just want to just keep myself involved in the game in, in some way. And like I said before, I'm going to continue playing until my legs don't let me. Um, but I'm, all I've ever known is football. I don't have, to my biggest detriment, it's I don't have an education. I left school when I was very young and I never followed it up because I concentrated too much on football. So it's uh, this is my new education is learning how to be a coach, learning how to, to progress after playing. And that's the that's what I'm in the middle of doing right now. Of course, and football itself has been, I think, very, very educational for you in many aspects. You know, like I wanted to ask you, you have traveled far and wide in terms of football. And I definitely know one story about your transfer. Other than that, what is the most bizarre or shocking incident that you ever came across during your association with football? Oh, I don't know. Um, that's, that's a hard one. Put me on the spot there. You could have passed me that question before and I could have, I could have had a little think about it. Um, nothing really, because like I've, with playing with Canada, we played a lot in Central America. Um, so we had a, lot, had a lot of stuff going on there that was uh, tough, very hostile, playing in the likes of Honduras. Honduras is a horrible place to play. Passionate, passionate fans. Um, but getting bags of pee thrown at you and uh, toilet rolls thrown at you and spat at and food thrown at you is, I think that's one of the most shocking things. Um, I'm not sure which, which story you know, but... Um, <laughs> I think the in India we didn't have many shocking ones. Uh, we had uh, one hotel in Goa where we were there for preseason. We had one hotel and um, we had one. We had what twenty five, thirty people there. We had one elevator that could fit one person in, and then you're going up the stairs, going up to to your room, and there's dogs laying everywhere. And it's a, that was an interesting one for us all. That was in our first season with Kerala. Um, but other than that, there's nothing really stands out that's shocking. That that's sort of out of the norm. Uh, but if you'd have let me know beforehand, I might have been able to think of a few more. 
the one that i know was uh, when i spoke to mr baljit real the i think your transfer regarding with Ken- oh yes yeah yeah going to going to mumbai um that was a that was an interesting one was i'd been promised the world i'd been offered a contract and i was adamant i was signing it and they offered me money they offered me this that and the other I said perfect it's like that was like that was it and then i got blanked for a month no emails i got ghosted no emails no texts no phone calls no answering phone calls so you ask the question so many times and there's only so many times you can not get an answer so it was a matter of i had a couple other teams i i was very close to signing for goa that year um which would have been interesting after they signed lanzarote and coro that would have been something that would have been fun to play in uh with them and jahu i think that would have been a great team to be a part of but uh, me and balji just got on the phone and just said listen we've got jamshedpur goa pune um all interested and kerala so it was a matter of yeah well let's just go out there let's get it done um i don't want to sit around anymore um and essentially i didn't get the contract that i was offered but i got uh similar terms to what other teams were offering um a couple of teams were offering a little bit more maybe but it wasn't about the money at that time it was just about the little bit lack of professionalism which is why we went out there um and again that that happened which in in terms of the business side of things i possibly maybe shouldn't have gone back to to kerala as much as i enjoyed it and as much as i i, I love playing for those fans um because less than a year later i get i get messed around again so it was a a bit naive for myself as as a 33 34 year old um to accept people on face value and their their trust and um but yeah i got promised the world and then the same thing happened a year later and i was out of contract and with a knee injury and and told to go and find a club so that was a uh, frustrating but yeah that was the uh, going to mumbai for for 48 hours was was crazy um me and balji and a couple of the other agents from the from inventive sports we we'd sorted things out over the 48 hours and like balji said to you i remember watching it he was literally on the in the taxi on the way to the airport proofreading my contract so it was a uh, yeah that was a a little bit of a mad one of course you like in terms of your uh, uh, career as a whole if you have to choose one coach or a person who had the most influence on your career who would that be Ooh. person i'd have to say my dad he, he wasn't a player he wasn't anything like that he but he was just a motivator and he was my, my best ever coach when i was a kid um and he's always been there he's always been biggest critic hammers me when i don't play well when i play well little pat on the back and come on next next game you can go again but i think the way the way i play and the the type of player i am how I'm, i i don't like giving up is based on my dad is he's had ms for 30 plus years 33 years i think he's had it for now um and he's still walking not much but he's still walking and a lot of people get it for 6 months 8 months and they're in wheelchairs so he's had it for 30 plus years and he's still he still worked for 15 years 20 years with it but didn't tell anybody so yeah i think he's th- the one who's probably pushed me the most to be the type of player I am and the type of person I am um if I'm if I'm going for in football um I think I had one coach at at Tranmere Rovers Brian Little who used to manage Aston Villa I had a great reputation or a great not reputation relationship with him um got on very well with him and he taught me a lot over the the what two years that I worked with him and then in in india i had uh, antonio habas i only played with him for the one year but i got on so well with him and um even with the language barrier at times uh, there was still a, a massive amount of trust there and i think that's the the people that i can look back at and say yeah they they had a really good 
impact on my career and my, the way I am as a as a player and a person. Definitely. And we're getting to the end and I'll ask you last two or three questions. And the first of the th- uh, of them is like, you have had a lot of, you know, like high moments in your career, but if you had to choose one moment as a standout moment, which one would that be? Um, boy, I've got a few. It's hard to pick one. Um, I think I played for Doncaster. I was on loan at Doncaster Rovers and we won the League One on the last day of the season against Brentford, which was incredible. Um, I think that was the most, I think, crazy day that I've been involved in in football. Winning the ISL was incredible. Um, Making my first appearance for Canada was possibly the, the biggest achievement I had as far as the pinnacle you want to play for your country. Um, scoring in the World Cup against Spain under 20s was probably my on par, my best goal with uh, the goal I scored against Chennai for ATK. Um, I think they're my two best goals. They're, they, there's moments in my career that I look back at, highs and lows that have shaped the way my career has gone. And like I said, those ones making my debut for, for Trammy Rovers when I was 16 years old and um, playing for Canada, playing in the Youth World Cup and playing against players that I have in India and all these things sort of come together and they, they, they make up quite a bit of a highlight reel for me. And, you know, like with your experience, the amount of experience I've had, if you had to give a piece of advice to a young player just starting out, what advice would you give that player? Don't believe the hype and just work, work hard. Don't believe when you get all the hype around you, don't just take that. Don't just listen to that. Listen to the negative ones as well. And But don't don't worry about it. I think it's a matter of if you're... I think the one thing my dad always taught me was you only get out of the game what you put into it. If you put in all the hard work, you'll get the rewards. Um, so, unfortunately, I know we're in a generation of social media and we have a lot of people who have ridiculous amounts of followers and... Um, they think that's it. They think that's made their career and they've had 10 appearances or five appearances and they've got 500,000 or 300,000 followers or a million followers or whatever. And they think they're superstars. You're only a superstar with what you do on the field. It's great having an image. And that's, that's, that's obviously goes with the times is we're in a generation of people need an image. But if you're not doing anything on the field, and what's that image for? Commercials? Advertisements? You're, you're a football player. Um, I think for me, it's you just have to focus on yourself and make your career as a footballer all about your career as a footballer. Anything else is a bonus. And I think, like I said, you only get out of the game what you put in. And if you don't work hard, you're not going to get anything from it. So just work as hard or harder than the person next to you and you'll be successful. Of course, and we'll wrap it up with one last question. This will be very controversial. And out of the three teams, at, at least two teams are still active, or at least by name, ATK, MB, although you played for ATK, not ATK, MB, and Kerala Blasters. Who do you think has a higher chance of winning the ISL this year? Um, It's going to be interesting with Kerala. They've, I think they've signed some good players. Um, tough one for them losing Sandesh. Um. It's a big, huge season for for Sahal. He had an incredible season two years ago, and last season he wasn't as good as he, what he should be. And then you've got a uh, Raul, K- uh, is it Raul KP? Big, huge season for him. Um, that's me just giving a big up to the to the inventive sports athletes. Um, no, but they are they're two very very good players. Um, they've they've recruited very well. I think bringing Nishu in. Uh, is a good signing for them. Uh, but I think it's, and this is no disrespect to Kerala, I think it's going to be uh, tough for them with the new management. Depends how the new coach comes in and gets his philosophies in because he played great stuff with Mohan Bagan last year. I watched the, quite a few of their games. Um, but I think it's ATKs to lose. I think ATK and Mumbai will be the favourites this year. Bangalore will be around. Tough one for Goa. 
but I think ATK have the majority of their team together. They've kept kept hold of their front two, which was so tough for people to compete with last year when you have a partnership that plays like that. Um, they've brought Thierry and they've brought Sandesh in. I think that's great recruitment from from the club. Um, brought uh, Subashish Bose in, which is huge. Whether he plays, I don't know, um, because I don't know where he gets in the team over Pritam and Prabhya. But yeah, they've, they've, they've got a really deep squad. They've signed some very good players and um, I think having McHugh back as well after his injury is a, is a big one for them. So I think for me, and I think without, it's hard to compare them because one's starting up fresh and one is, um, one has signed some very good players and kept the majority of their team together. So I think for me, out of those two, I've got to go for ATK, Mambagan. I think they, sorry, I had to throw that in. Um, it's, it's hard for me um, because it's only ATK to me, um, but now they've changed my, ATK Mahambagan. I know Mahambagan fans want ATK taken out of it, but I don't think that's that's fair, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, I think I think ATK and B have got a they've got a more established squad, same coach, same philosophies that they 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 won it last year comfortably. Um, so I, I think I'd have to go with them them as favourites for this year for them. Of course, Sanyu, like on that note, we'll wrap it up. And so, Ian, thank you so much for talking to me. And I wish you all the best for your coaching career. And hope you can come back to India as a coach and maybe win the ISL <laughs> once again as a coach. And hope we can talk and soon. Thank you so much. Take care. Stay safe. Bye. No problem. Thank you very much. Player-wise, it would have to be Steven Gerrard. Just because, again, before before I became a, a journalist, you know, he was, he was someone I just admired massively in terms of the absolute complete footballer I think if you were trying to like make a footballer in a factory he would it would be Steven Gerrard someone who you know I think JD Carragher summed it up best once when he said you know Steven Gerrard's biggest strength is he doesn't have any weaknesses ah the stadium uh, I, I don't see really uh, need to do that mainly um, such a, a big spending but it's true that it would be um, a fantastic stadium that's not bad but uh, you have to be careful and mainly at this moment uh, when we are going to face a very difficult time.